Hi, it's Rick here. Welcome back to the second part of a tutorial that explains types using a simple database. Since our last broadcast, I've uh, written a sort routine, I've also written a save and load routine, and I've added a backdrop. So let's just see this backdrop here. We've got load image, uh, image number one, backdrop.png, and then I create a sprite, uh, sprite one based on that image. Now, I got this background from a DLC, the giant asset pack one. I'm going to have a look at that. Uh, this is installed on my system. Backgrounds, abstract, and yeah, there's different sizes of it. I uh, chose that one and renamed it background.png and put it into my media folder for the project. So that's what I did there. And I could, if we go down the source code, this part of the source code is where I've changed it. Originally we had database.sort but that was, uh, wasn't was really good enough because um, if you put in a name like my name Rick with a capital R and then you put Fred with a lowercase f, it wouldn't sort it properly. So I had to do my own sort routine. So remove that. Um, I've added two more buttons uh, as well, but we'll come to those in a moment. If the sort button is pressed, then we go sub save data, which saves the data in the current record. And then we go to, to a new thing called sort records. Now a little tip, if you want to jump to where that's going to quickly, you can right click and go to tag definition. So we click that and we go straight down to the label. It's a quick way, rather than me scrolling up and down the source code. So this is uh, a simple slow bubble sort. Okay, there's, there's plenty of information out there on the internet on sorting. This is the worst type of sort, but really we've only got 100 records. We're running it on a Windows PC, it's going to be pretty fast, we've only got four fields. We are only sorting on one of those fields, so speed is not an issue. But if you've got thousands of records, you want to look at different types of uh, sorting. First it just checks that uh, we've got at least two records, because you don't want to sort one record, there's no point. And then we have two loops, and um, we have to do two loops, sort of nested loops, and go through each item within the, the database and check each item with all the other items and move it up or leave it where it is depending if it needs sorting and changing over. You can look up bubble sort logic uh, at your leisure. I'm not going to go into all that now. But essentially we take the first database item and we compare it with the next database item. And if the first one is greater than the second one then they need swapping around, depending if you're doing A to Z or Z to A. We're doing A to Z. So then we store the second one. Okay, we've got to. If we just swap them over straight away, we're going to lose one. So we we, we put one of the strings uh, into store dollar, just to save it. Then we swap over the next one, the same as the first one, and then we make the first one the one in store dollar, which was the next one. Okay. We do that for all the fields in the record. First name, last name, age and score. And it goes round and round and does a sort. So that's worth analysing if you want to look at sorting. It didn't take me too long to write it. But it's quite a simple sort. So what else have we added? Okay, so we've got a load and save. If I just run the application now, you can see it's got a nice backdrop. I can put in my name. Okay, uh, I can add. Put another name in, and another, and so on. So we've got some names in there. Add another one. Let's put Andrew. And they're out of order. So we do sort. And now, viewing one of five, Andrew, Bert, Dave, John, Rick, all sorted. We've also got a save and a load. So we can save that out. We can quit, rerun it, load, and we've got the database loaded back in. And it was sorted because that's how it was saved. So this is what these two routines do. Save out data, okay? Open to write will open a file on your device. Open to write file one, that's the ID of the file, because you might have a, an application that's got multiple files opened. We're creating the name of the file, simpledb.dat. 
we're using zero to mean every time we write this file we're going to completely write it fresh. You can do versions where you keep appending, adding to the end, but I'm just going to dump the whole set of records out to the file and I don't want to add it to the end, I want to just write it out fresh every time. So I'm going to write an integer to the file, total records. So that, that's important because when I come to load it in, I need to know how many records are set up. So then I go for i equals 1 to max records, max records is 100. So it goes through all the records and it writes a string, writes a string, writes an integer, writes a float, takes it out, puts it into the file, and then it closes the file. You must close the file. I had a bug earlier, I wasn't closing the file. Um, putting that in fixed it. So then we come to load in data. Yeah, I need to put that back in because I actually thought that was a bug, it wasn't. If you first click the load button and you've not actually saved anything, then it's not going to be able to open the file. So I just do it if get file exists. And if it does, then obviously it must be saved out. So then I open it. I get that first integer, which is how many records are actually live in the database. And I set that to total records. Then I go through the 100 records and load them all in and I close the file and I set the current record to number one because I want to start looking at record number one then I go and fill the data so the database is displayed properly and that's end if and that's load and save quite simple and um, very effective so that's what I've done that's the finished product really um, take it do what you want with it you can download from the description hopefully that's told you a lot about types it's also showing you about load and save. Please subscribe. You'll get updates every time I release a video if you do that. In my next tutorial, I'm going to start writing a Tetris clone. So that's going to be interesting and fun. I've never done such a, a program, so it's going to throw up a few challenges. Please join me in the next tutorial. Have a great time coding. Bye.